Hello, welcome to this third video looking at limits as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to lead you through this. If you have any questions, don't be afraid. Just reach out to me and or comment down below. All right, so this now, uh, the first video was about just introducing limits at infinity. What are they used for finding a horizontal asymptote if it's a constant? Then the second video was about looking at rational functions of polynomial divided by another polynomial and ways to find limits at infinity there. Now we're gonna look at when there's um, just other things happening, uh, uh, a square root involved in the mix. Um, and so this particular question is the limit as x goes to negative infinity and the numerator is the root of x, 9x to the 6 minus x and that's all divided by x cubed plus one. The previous video's shortcuts can't be used here because we don't officially have a rational function. The root throws it off. Take off the root, you can answer this question no time flat. With the root, the game changes. Now, one thing you can do is take the root of each part there and take the root of 9x to the 6th and the root of negative x. You can't do that. All right, so what do you do? Well, we have to, uh, fortunately, employ algebra a lot of algebra in this question. Um, and the algebraic approach to finding limits at infinity is focusing on the denominator, finding the highest exponent on x and multiplying by its reciprocal. In this particular question, x cubed is the highest exponent on x in the denominator, multiply by one over x cubed. What it does, it forces your denominator to go to a constant and moves all the action up in the numerator. Let's take a look at it. In the denominator, it'll be straightforward. You know, that'll be 1 plus 1 over x cubed. No trouble. The numerator is trouble. It seems innocent. You now you take the root and you divide it by x cubed. What's so wrong with that? Well, the issue is that uh, you want to be able to simplify it. You want to be able to incorporate the x cubed into the parts that are, that are um, up top there with the root. So you want to then be able to have it represented as a root. So that then you have a root at the top and a root at the bottom. So you could then do the root of the entire fraction. That's where we're headed. But there's an issue here. You see, x is not headed towards infinity. It's very important here. x is headed towards negative infinity. So when you, when you look at x cubed, and you'd like to be able to write it as the, the square root of, of x squared, uh, x to the sixth, okay? You can't, all right? The leading term, x cubed, is headed to negative infinity. It's a negative number. Yeah, x is headed to negative infinity, so this, this denominator is headed to a negative number, a negative large number. So I want to write x cubed as the root of x to the sixth, which would be good, right? But you can't. So we're gonna have to enforce the fact that the x cubed is headed to a negative number by putting the negative root. This only happens when you have this lethal combination of x headed towards negative infinity and your leading power in the denominator being odd. If this was a squared as a leading power in the denominator, we wouldn't care because um, x squared would be positive. We just say, oh, let's write this as the root of x to the sixth. But because it's an odd power and negative raised to an odd is negative, then we have to enforce this negative here. I have it in red so it stands out. Okay. Why do this root of x to the sixth? Because you want to be able to combine it with the root from the numerator. So. Um, so in doing that, then I can write it as one root, okay? So x goes to negative infinity, x cubed is negative. This root of x to the six must be actually negative. All right, great. So now I can write it as one root, keep that negative out there. And now I can combine the two parts, the, the part that was already underneath the root, the part that I kind of like created to be underneath the root. I can now, with multiple terms in a numerator, but a single term in the denominator, I can combine them. And so I make it 9x6 over x6 minus x over x6, and I, I cancel. I have a 9 minus 1 over x to the fifth. 
All right, why? Why do all this? It's all about having terms that go off to zero and seeing what's left over. And so the algebraic approach to finding a limit is focusing on the denominator, finding a leading term, and multiplying by its reciprocal. Now, if you'd like to be able to incorporate that into a root, you gotta be careful with the lethal combination of negative infinity as x going to and an odd power. In that case, you have to make it negative when you bring it into the root. Combine it, write off those terms that go to zero, and what are you left with? Uh, the square root of nine. It's three, but negative three. Denominator one, the answer is negative three. Okay. And so for full credit, you have to show all this work. Um, when you look at it though, you can sort of look at it and tell, oh, that's, a, that's an x to the sixth that's up top, but it's really underneath a root. So it, it behaves like an x cubed. It's not a it's not a one x cubed. It's a, a three x cubed because you do the root of nine too. This this function behaves like three x cubed on top of x cubed, which is going to be a negative three. You can say that you can do that, but you can't get full credit for that, all right? I have to do all this work just to, to to get full credit. All right, so that's one example, and then let's do another. We have limit as x goes to infinity, root of nine x squared plus x minus three x. Limit as x goes to infinity, do not plug in infinity. You can't do it. You can't treat infinity like a number, okay? You can't just think of, I mean, you, can, you can conceive of it though. Like think of a big number, but you can't plug it in. Don't write nine infinity squared plus infinity under the square root minus three times infinity. Don't do that. You'll lose points, unfortunately. You can't do it, okay? All right, but it is a large number minus a large number, but there's degrees at which you approach infinity. So it's possible that this could be a constant. And so the algebraic approach here is to multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate. Okay, the conjugate is where you change the sign that's in between. If it's two roots, change the sign that's in between. If it's one root and, uh, and a constant or a, a term, that's something else there, change the root, change the sign that's in between. Don't change the sign that's underneath the root, change the sign that's in between. What you're creating is a difference of squares, a plus b times a minus b. The middle terms cancel out. You're getting rid of the root. Why? Well, the goal in mind is to be able to find this limit. You're putting the root in a denominator. It's quite simple as it is. You're kind of making it um, not, not more simple, but um, with the goal in mind of, of getting to the final result, though, and this will do it for you. When you FOIL out the numerator, you get 9x squared plus x, and then you get minus 9x squared. Don't forget the, the fact that they're uh, a negative times a positive 3x. So the 9x squares cancel. The original function, as x goes to infinity, um, behaves the same way as this function does, as x goes to infinity. And we can treat this function like we did the last question. Okay, so highest exponent in the denominator is actually a one. You might think it's x squared because you look at it, you see the you see the x squared, but it's underneath a radical, so it behaves like an x. There's a three x term there. That's definitely an x. And so what you do is. In that denominator, since the highest term is an x, you multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of that highest term, 1 over x. So in the numerator, oh, that's nice. It makes it a 1. Now in the denominator, you have root of 9x squared, who's going to be over x, and then plus 3. Distribute. Okay. Now, this time, x is headed to infinity. Okay. If x was headed to negative infinity, we'd have to do the same thing we did on the last example. All right, so same thing though, same concept though, we would like to be able to combine it with the root. So you make it, you make x equal to root x squared. And then you make them underneath one root. Um, and then you split them up. It's nine plus one over x. And then you write off that one over x. The final result, 
is 1 over root 9 plus 3 or 1 sixth. Okay, so denominator term there, 9x squared plus x with the root on top of it, that behaves like x does. You can't take the root of both, but you can think about what happens as it does, though. It's kind of that same idea. All right, great. So two examples involving roots. Um, the limits at infinity. One, one was at minus infinity, one's infinity. And uh, just be careful if you have that combination of a negative infinity, uh, x approaching negative infinity limit with a, with a um, leading power in the denominator being odd. Watch out for that. All right, thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. And... Um, Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.